A young man went missing in Hacumba, California a few years back. I'm going to go back over this whole story and remind you that he is still missing and hopefully we can find some new tips on this case. It's coming up next. So this is a very mysterious case that happened in 2016 about this young man that went missing. He left his home and then ended up all the way outside of San Diego, California. And what was very unusual about it is he had his dog with him and his dog was found in the back seat and he had passed away. So let me go back to the day that he went missing and you can follow along with me on this mysterious disappearance. So Jonathan Arash Barmaki is 27 years old when he went missing back on April 30th, 2016. Now what's so mysterious about this case is he ended up outside of San Diego, California, and they don't know why he went there. He was from Buena Park. He lived with his mom, Louisa, and he was a house flipper. She said that he left that day and he didn't say goodbye, but he left and she didn't see anything different or unusual about it. And he also took his dog with him. His dog's name was Sandy and his dog was 15 years old. Now they go back and they're able to trace the route that Jonathan took when he left Bueno Park. And let me go over what was put down regarding that. I wanna make sure I've got all of it laid out for you. So the investigation found that Jonathan made several stops before he ended up in a remote location in San Diego County. There was a receipt from PetSmart in Encinitas showing that he bought two pet bowls and some dog food and in uh, Encinitas this is about an hour away from Buena Park, all right? And that's on the way to San Diego. Then a surveillance video camera picks up Jonathan at a Target at Plaza Bonita Mall in the Chula Vista area of San Diego County around 9 p.m. on April 30th. And the same day he left Buena Park. Then he purchased toiletries a phone charger and some clothes. Then Sunday morning, he was seen by another surveillance camera at the Valero gas station in National City around 5 a.m. Sunday. This is the last that is known about Jonathan's journey until his car was found in Hacumba about 18 hours later. All right, this was a report from Channel 10 News. Now, when the car was found, they found Jonathan's dog, Sandy, deceased. They later said that the dog had died from natural causes, maybe old age, it would be considered a natural cause. And they don't know what happened to Jonathan. They found his cell phone in the car. They didn't find his keys. They didn't find his wallet. And they did find some footprints leading away from the car. They weren't, they did specifically say they were Jonathan's footprints, but they said they left from the car and when it went towards the fence and disappeared from there. Now I've been in Hakumba many times. It's been there for many, many years. In fact, my own grandfather went down there with my mother many, many years ago, and they would be hunting around for rocks. There was one particular rock over in this area that had little tiny garnet stones. And every now and then they would go down there and they would chip away at this rock to get this garnet stones. And then many years later, as an adult, I went back there and would chip away at this big rock with the garnet stones. And you could see over the years how this rock kept getting smaller and smaller as other people were also chipping away from way on it too, you know? So it's also a very quiet place. There's no 
activity there. There is a town, but it's very, very small. Now, back in the 30s and 40s, it was a hopping town. All the celebrities from Hollywood would drive down there to go to the hot springs. It's a natural spring down there, and they would hang out and party and then go back to Los Angeles. And then right around the 50s and 60s, it started not being such a popular place to go. They would go to other places instead. And then by 1980s, it was just pretty much the bathhouses weren't used anymore. I believe they burned down around 83. And just a couple of people every now and then would show up there. It was all, You'd go on Highway 8 and you could take the road that would take you down Hakumba. And most people would stop at that gas station right there off of Highway 8. And then if you decided, you, most people would get right back on the freeway. But there were occasional people that would take off and they would go from that road all the way into Hakuma to look around. And we would go up there to go shooting every now and then. No one seemed to care. There was an area where everybody could shoot and you, no one would complain. No one would say anything about it. As time would progress over the years, there was more and more border patrol in that area and you could see them in the distance and they could see you i'm sure they have binoculars and they're watching what they do you were doing they knew you were shooting but that didn't bother them at all and then there was also the fence that was put up and you can see a picture of the fence now as i said before they had footprints leading from his car to the fence and he doesn't have to worry about going over the fence because as you can see in this picture, the fences will stop suddenly and you can go around them. Now, over time, they've completed more of the fence, so but they do stop like at a big, huge boulder. And if you really want to get over, you just crawl up over the boulder and go over the other side. But the Border Patrol is always watching that area. Now, it's interesting to think that why didn't the Border Patrol see him get out of his car and go over there? Well, they're not there all the time. We would see them, but they wouldn't always be there. They would sit there for a while, and then they would move to another location. So I guess it's a good possibility that during that time that Jonathan was there, let's assume that he was there, that they just they didn't see him get out of the car or anything unusual going on because they were in another area. Now, well, there's a lot of theories about this case. We don't know, for example, when the dog died. Did the dog die uh, maybe while he was going through San Diego County? We know he got food for him. We know we got he got water for him, so he was alive traveling down. But at some point during that ride, did the dog pass? And then he was overwhelmed and he pulled off in Hakumba. Now, he was not familiar with this area and he wasn't really even familiar with San Diego at all. So could he pull off the road thinking this was a nice place to go? Was he thinking of even burying the dog out there? Well, he didn't have a shovel, so that doesn't seem likely. But the dog was left there. Did he go walking off and for some reason never returned? Now, did he go, was he intentionally going there and going to Mexico? Well, I don't know. But there's easier ways to get to Mexico. He wouldn't have had to go this route. He could have very easily just gone through the border. There's a border crossing in San Ysidro, and he could have drove right through during that time and drove right back with no problems. It, there'd be no need to go trumping through this back road to get there. But I did get a photo. This is back in 2017. And it was a photo of a man standing in Mexico. And you could tell he was homeless. Now, I have several photos of assumed Americans in Mexico. I get people that send me these photos quite a bit. And I post them on this story I did starting back in uh, 2017, 2016. And you can take a look at all those photos. I have a link at Missing Persons of America where you can go take a look at them. And this one particular photo of this man looks remarkably like Jonathan, I think. Although, you know, you got a side por portrait, really, kind of like from this point on, as you can see. And I thought it was enough of a 
like this, then I contact his mother and sent her over the photo. She looked it over at that time and she said it was not Jonathan. Now, this was very, a few years back. I don't know where this man is at this time. Many of those photos that you'll see there are from a few years back, and we don't know if they're still in that location or not. But there's been many people that have tried to get down to Mexico to verify who these people are. So don't, when you read the story, you'll see all that information on there. Now, to go back to Jonathan, we, we know that he went to Target around 9 p.m. that night. And where was he until the following morning? Did he decide to go to a hotel or motel? If he did, was did he pay cash or did he have an ATM card that he used to get the room, decide to stay there? Or did he just decide to stay in his car? I, I don't know. This is These are all questions about this mysterious case that just can't be answered. Now, when the car was found, it had gasoline in it, plenty of gasoline in it, so it didn't run out of gas. Inside the car, as I mentioned before, was his cell phone, the dog food, two, do two bowls that he bought previously for his dog, and, and Sandy was in the car. His keys and his wallet are missing. And I also was wondering about the temperature. I thought, well, maybe he walked away from the car and got overcome with heat because it gets very hot in that location during the summer. But it was only around the mid-80s that day. And in the evenings, it was in the 60s. So it wasn't too cold for him to freeze and it wasn't too hot for him to overheated and like I said with the border patrol all over in that area it wouldn't take any time for them to if he was looking for help to wave somebody down and get the help. Now there's some other theories that maybe something happened to Jonathan on his way over to Hakumba. Maybe it was not him that got out of the car. Maybe when he was at the Valero gas station, somebody jumped into the car when, with the gun and made him drive someplace. Or maybe when he was over at the Target, maybe he met up with foul play before he ever got to Hakumba. Maybe that's why the car was in Hakumba, because somebody jumped into the car, drove the car to Hakumba, and then they left the dog in the car and the dog passed maybe from the heat of being in the closed up car. There's a theory there too. Now, I haven't heard anything that the police took the car and searched for any fingerprints. I don't know if they did any cast of the footprints, none of that. I haven't heard anything about that at all. I don't know if they've talked with the border patrol to see if they found anything, nothing. I haven't heard anything along this line at all. If it's out there, if that's the case, they're keeping it to themselves and they haven't told the public about it. But I'm hoping that someone somewhere has heard something about this case and has not been able to come out, come forward with any information before this, but now they are able to. And they could give some kind of tip of what happened to Jonathan. Now, Jonathan is described as five foot 11, 180 pounds, brown eyes and dark brown hair. He was last seen wearing a black t-shirt, dark blue sweatpants, and glasses. And you see the photo of him. And I, I don't know. This is a case that I would really, really like to see solved. This is one of the reasons I decided to bring it to your attention if you have not heard from, of it before. And hopefully somebody knows something. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching. And appreciate it. I'll see you soon.